So chapter 1.1 is on the sets of numbers. And the two, the first two sets that you have to worry about are real numbers and imaginary numbers. Real numbers are numbers that have a value on the number line. So you will have numbers such as 1 or pi or 7 eighths. Imaginary numbers are square roots of negative numbers. So examples are the square root of negative 9 and the square root of negative 5, which are not real numbers. However, these, the real and imaginary numbers fall beneath complex numbers. And complex numbers are at the top of the number hierarchy. And complex numbers are any number that can be expressed in A over B form. And so you have the archetype of complex numbers, examples such as 5 plus 2i or 7 minus 4i. And if you remember, i equals the square root of negative 1. Um, however, you can have real numbers such as pi that can be expressed as complex numbers. So you can do pi plus 0i. And the same goes for complex numbers such as, as we saw before, square root of negative, negative 9 can be written as 3i, which can equal 0 plus 3i, so that in that way it can be expressed as a complex number. You have real and imaginary numbers. And real numbers can be broken down further. So first you have negative numbers, 0, and positive numbers. Negative 5, negative 3 halves, 0 is obviously 0 and positive, so you'll have the opposites of the negative, so 3, 7 eighths. And those are your breakdown of the real numbers. And now real numbers break down further into rational numbers and irrational numbers. And rational numbers are any real number that can be expressed in A over B form. And so basically what I'm saying is any number that can be expressed as a ratio between two different numbers. So numbers such as 3 can be written as 3 over 1. And you have your fractions of 4 over 7 and the rest. And even decimals such as 0 0.6667 6, 6, can be written as 2 over 3. However, irrational numbers cannot be put into A over B form. So numbers such as the square root of 5 and pi are irrational. Next we have the irrational numbers which break down into radicals and transcendentals. Radicals are non-perfect roots of integers. So you have non-perfect roots so you, such as root 5 and root 2. Transcendentals however cannot be expressed as roots so you have numbers such as pi and e. Next, the rational numbers break down even further. So the rational numbers go into non-integers and integers. Non-integers are your fractions and decimals, which are essentially the same thing. So you have numbers such as four-fifths and two, two and seven eighths. Integers, however, are the whole numbers and their opposites. So you have numbers such as nine, negative 100. So all of the whole numbers did not include fractions or decimals. And integers also break down further. Beneath integers, you have your natural numbers, your digits, the even numbers, and the odd numbers. The natural numbers are the positive integers. So anything ranging from 1 to 100. Digits, however, are just the natural numbers from 0 to 9. And then even numbers, you should know, are divisible by 2. So you have 2 and then up to 4, 10, 
100. And odd numbers are not divisible by 2. So you have 3, 9, 13. And that is your, num is your sets of numbers that you need to know. Chapter 1.2 is on the field axioms. And first off, you have to know what an axiom is. An axiom is a property that is accepted without proof. So these properties you're allowed to use, and you don't need to prove them so that you can use them. So there are 11 field axioms that apply to addition and multiplication. The first one is called closure. Closure states that the domain of real numbers is closed under addition and multiplication. And so what that means is that as long as x and y are real, that x plus y will equal a real number and x times y will equal a real number. So it's saying that you can't add a real number to a real number and get an imaginary number. And you can't multiply two as well to get an imaginary number. The next property is commutativity. And commutativity states that the order by which the numbers are combined does not matter. So that states that x plus y will equal y plus x, so that the order which you add them does not multiply. And for the same for multiplication, that x times y equals y times x. Next property is associativity. Associativity states that the grouping of the numbers does not matter. So this matters when there are three or more elements in your equation. So if you have x plus y plus z, that where the parentheses are does not matter. So that will that would equal x plus y plus z. And similar for multiplication, that x times y times z equals x times y times z. And that where the parentheses are does not affect the outcome of the equation. The next field axiom is distributivity, which states that multiplication distributes over addition. So that says that if you have x and then times y plus z, it equals xy plus xz. So the x distributes over the addition inside of the parentheses. The next field axiom is the identity elements. And the identity elements, there's one for addition and one for multiplication. For addition, the identity element is 0. And that states that if you add that to any number, you'll get the same number. For multiplication, the identity element is 1. So if you multiply that by any number, say x, you'll get the same number, namely x. The final pair of field axioms is, are the inverses. For inverses, the additive inverse is negative x. And that says that if you add that to the same number, so x plus negative x, you will get 0, which also happens to be the identity element for addition. The, multiplication, the multiplicative inverse is 1 over x. That states that if you multiply that by the same number, so x times 1 over x, you will get 1, which also happens to be the multiplicative identity element. Chapter 1.3 is on variables and expressions. For variables and expressions, a variable is a letter that stands for an unspecified number from a given set of numbers. And unless you're told differently, the domain should, e should be all real numbers. An expression, however, is variables and constants connected by operations. And an expression stands for a variable could be n or x. An expression would be 3n plus 2 or 4x plus 3, where the whole expression equals a certain number that is not that has not been clarified.
so the axioms that we discussed in the previous section only apply to addition and multiplication. So because of that, you have to rewrite subtraction, division, and exponential in terms of multiplication and addition. So subtraction can be rewritten as the opposite of addition. So you have a stereotypical subtraction of x minus y can be written as x plus negative y. And because of that, it's rewritten as addition. And likewise, you have division and exponential that have to be rewritten as, in this case, multiplication. So division, if you have x over y, it can be written as x times 1 over y, making it multiplication. And exponential, if you have the expression x to the fourth, same thing as saying x times x times x times x, making it multiplication again. Okay, now say you have the equation 7x squared times 2 divided by x, and you're supposed to solve it for when x equals 4. So what you first want to do is change the division into multiplication. So you can go 7x squared times 2 times 1 over x. And then you can use the commutative property to move the 1 over x around. And then the associative property to group that. And then exponential simplifies it to 7x, x, 1 over x, in parentheses, times 2. And then you see you have x times 1 over x. We know that, that equals 1. So you have 7x times 2, because you don't have to rewrite the 2, which then equals 14x. You can use the, uh, the associativity property. And you substitute in the x equals 4. So you have 14 times 4. And then the answer is 56. That's how you simplify an expression.